Once upon a time, we communicated and the governments listened. They listened to our phone calls and opened our letters. We were transparent, open books. Our rulers were happy. One day, internet came and everything was encrypted. The government couldn't listen and that made them mad. They wanted the right to make us transparent again. Make America transparent again. In his book, The Absolute I, French philosopher Gerard Weichmann typifies our times as an age of transparency, thanks to the development of surveillance technologies and our idolatry of images. The ready access to image-producing technologies creates an anxiety for the right to see everything. What you do not see ceases to exist. Only what you see is real. What you do not know is no longer mystery. It becomes suspicious. By my speakers of culture of transparency, I prefer to call it the cult of transparency. There was a time when biometrics were helping anthropologists debunk the myth of races, for instance. However, DNA data stubbornly brings us back to the tribalism of nationalities and ethnicities. The case of Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren is very illustrative. She fell in the trap of Donald Trump, who nicknamed her Pocahontas due to her claim of Native American ancestry. And in a move that you would expect from a white supremacist, overly interested in, in their, uh, for the uh, DNA, Warren made public her DNA testing to prove the veracity of her family history. Who cares? The leaders of the Cherokee Nation immediately disowned her by stating the obvious. Heritage is not about DNA, but about culture. This is not the type of identity politics that matters, but Warren fell for the cult of transparency. As early as 1969, Edouard Glissant spoke about the importance to preserve our right to be opaque. And quote, there's a basic injustice in the worldwide spread of transparency and the projection of Western thought. As far as I'm concerned, a person has the right to be opaque. That doesn't stop me from liking that person. It doesn't stop me from working with him, hanging out with him, etc. A racist is someone who refuses what he, un what he doesn't understand. I cannot say what I don't understand, end of quote. The call of transparency has found an extraordinary metaphor in the image of the weeping angel. In June 2007, the revival of the series Doctor Who introduced this new monster. The weeping angel, and I quote, are a species of winged humanoids from the early universe, so-called because they covered their faces, giving them a weeping appearance to prevent trapping themselves in storm form for eternity. What makes them horrifying is that they remain as statues if they are looked at once, but once they are out of sight, even in a blink, they can move terribly fast and kill you." End quote. The doctor's warning is clear. Don't blink. Blink and you're dead. Don't turn your back. Don't look away and don't blink. Good luck. The slide here shows the image of a flag designed by Trevor Paglin for Creative Time Project Pledge of Allegiance. Paglin, whose work deals with mass surveillance, shows the topic of the Weeping Angel after reports came public of the CIA using this very name to baptize a hacking tool developed to spy on citizens using a smart TVs. The tool would basically turn your smart TV into a giant bug, sending recording back to their headquarters while the TV was apparently off. In his flag, Peglin included a coded message that only six people cracked, and it read, CIA, IOC, beware the weeping angel. We live in your TV. Don't blink. The intelligence community, NSA, CIA, FBI, claims in their website that they are too creative. And if we have any doubt, the use of that name, Wikipedia Angel, is proof of that. The naming of a hacking tool turning smart TVs into bug is nothing short of poetic. Intelligence demands transparency, but not their own. In fact, there is such a culture of secrecy that NSA 
National Security Agency, also stands for no such agency. And for decades, the public knew nothing about their budget until the CIA boss in 2005 said publicly, apparently in an accident, that their budget was around 44 billion that year. There is no better, more fitting image for our NSA or CIA agent than the image of an angel. Angels are messengers and guardians. Pope John Paul II spoke about how, quote, angels participate in the history of salvation. End of quote. Just like the NSA or CIA, quote, they have nobody. Even if in particular circumstances they rebuild themselves under visible forms because of their mission for the good of the people. End of quote. They are somewhere around us, everywhere. They just don't materialize until they need to. Don't blink. In the angelology of sites of angels, that exists too, angels are intermediaries between the divine and humanity. In Christianity, Gabriel is the angel who performs acts of power and justice. In Islam, Kiraman and Katibin are the angels who record the good and bad deeds. Angels are therefore celestial bureaucrats, functionaries. They probably provide every one of us, just like CIA agents do in preparation for the final judgment. There is also the angel of death, but death is not bad in itself. It is only the condition and repercussion of death that make, that make it glorious or ridiculous. CIA, FBI, NSA, they are our guardian angels. They are not meant to harm or threat, just the opposite. That depends on the nature of their task, their mission, just like angels. NSA agents have greater knowledge than men, but they are, they are not omniscient. Take Edward Snowden. He definitely knew more than any regular human, yet it's just so much that he could do. The same goes for those people with security clearance in front of intelligence agency, like presidents and some senators. But whipping angels are something else. These angels have gone rogue. The whipping angels is an image of the, for this age of mass surveillance, and it came from the very agency that defined define our culture. Don't blink. Nothing is more effective in creating fear than surveillance. The gaze is power. It petrifies. The gaze for it is power for it creates eyewitnesses for every, everyone witnesses. For these very principles, a culture of surveillance has emerged to develop courses too by means of technology. You may remember Snowden, again, made, made public the massive data collection project of the NSA. People immediately began posting memes on Facebook and Instagram. Barack Obama's famous slogan became, from yes we can, became yes we scan. And sociologist uh, Bida Bach points out that security has taken a prominent, such a prominent, prominent role in society that the government now understands protecting in citizen, citizenry in a na very narrow sense of security. No longer democracy, human rights, or privacy are among those cherished principles. Uh, those are actually expendable. So, uh, sorry. Sociologist Rogelio Science indicates that also, and I quote, it is the powerless, immigrants, people of color, and the poor that are particularly likely to be of interest to bureaucratic, operative, and law enforcement authorities. Race, nativity, citizenship, and social and economic status carry disproportionate weight in the models that operative use to identify and profile people considered dangerous. End of quote. This has also impacted the way in which the U.S. now sees immigration as a whole. It is no longer an engine for entrepreneurship and innovation, but a wild card, a risky bet. A strengthening of our border is always at the core of the policies that are being discussed. Either geographical borders like those shared in the north uh, with Canada or the south with Mexico, or to the ports of entry. And I want to finish with uh, this image. Artist of artist Hassan Elahi, who experienced this in 2003 when he was stopped at an airport and informed that he was blacklisted. Ever since, he has constantly fed the FBI with information about his whereabouts, and you can try his current location 
all, at all times on his website. The question is now more relevant than ever. Today, the choice between opacity and transparency has become crucial. We, the people of the unencrypted states of, the, of America, demand our right to opacity in the age of the call of transparency. Meanwhile, don't blink. Blink and you're dead. Don't turn your back, don't look away, and don't blink. Good luck.